Have you okay with this so far? Now I'm going to have you practice one right away just so you get the hang of it. Let's do x squared equals 18. Go for it. Warming up here now, huh? Get some math going on, some blood flowing on. Oh, yeah. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. Are you going to do it by subtracting 18 from both sides? No. So we're learning something new because before, I mean, I kind of pounded this in your head. I said, before, whenever you have an x squared, you get everything to one side and zero on the other side, right? Now we have options. Can you do that in this problem? No, not really. You have to know the problem, right? If this was like a 25, if that was like a 36, a 49, no problem. Yeah, you could do that. You could subtract it and then factor it. But when you have something like 18, it's not a difference of squares anymore. It's not really going to work. We had to have another way. The other way is we're going to get rid of a square with a square root. We know that's possible because a square and a square root are inverse operations. The only thing you have to be careful of is two things right here. First, make sure you don't just do it to one side. It's an equation after all, right? Equations mean what you do to one side, you got to do the other. So I at least need need that. But that's not good enough for us. Explain why not. Plus minus. Two answers okay, so we are going to get our two solutions somehow, right? You're not just going to give me one solution. That'd be not even halfway there, really. So that plus minus, that's absolutely crucial. That's saying that I understand that when I square a number, it's taking a negative and making it positive. Taking a positive and keeping it positive. That's our two solutions we're getting out of that. So you should have on your paper x equals plus or minus Square root of 18, raise your hand if you, understand, if you got that far. Good. You understand the, the key concept then? You understand that you take a square root of both sides and you include the plus minus. After that, it goes back to our chapter 10 stuff. Can you simplify it? Well, of course you can simplify it. We're going to split up 18 as 9 times 2. If we take the square root of 9, we're going to get 3. So your answer, I made that a little 2 close there. Your answer when you simplify this is going to be 3 root 2. Also, I want you to get in the habit, this is, this is technically appropriate, plus or minus 3 root 2. That, that's two solutions, right? Write out your solutions though, because when you get to the next section, you're going to have to do that anyway. So I'd like you to write out, just so you're aware that you're actually getting two solutions. This is not one solution right here. This is not just your answer. There's two solutions here. You have 3 square root 2, and negative 3 square root 2. Write both of those out. Okay, on a show of hands, how many people feel okay with what we just talked about? Okay, if you're not raising your hand, I'm assuming you're, you're not okay. Are we okay with this or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good deal. So we can now have a couple options here. If we have a perfect square, we can, we can get everything to one side, factor it. We can do that. We know how to factor things. But now we have another option. We get a square root. We can take a square root. Of, I'm sorry, a square. We can take a square root of both sides and solve it that way. Still get our two solutions. That's great. What are we going to do on that problem? Does this look the same as the first two problems we did? No. no over here, we, we already had the square root on one side and a number on the other side. What are we going to do Factor here? Pull out a five. You could pull out a five here. You could do that. That's right. But then what would you do? <laughs> Huh? Isolate the x. Isolate the x. Why would we want to isolate the x? Let me ask you a question. Can you take a square root of this thing right now? Do you want to do that? Do you want to do this? Does that look good to you? Oh, that would that would suck right there, right? Because there's nothing you can do right right here on the side. You don't you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Why were these nice? Look at look at the board. Why were these? Nice. The x, was by itself. the x squared was by itself, right? Because if the x squared was by itself, I know, oh, yeah, x squared. 
Right? If it's not by itself, can I, can I take a square root of both those? Because i tell you what, right now, you can't split this up and take a square root of both those numbers. It's impossible. It doesn't work. So this might not be the way to go, because if you do that, well, you're stuck. Instead, I want to make this one look like these ones. If this one looks like these ones, then we have no problem. You agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the key then? That the notes you're going to write down. Isolate. Say what, Lily? Move the 55 to the other side. Great. Why are we trying to do that? So they can be separated. So they can be separated. What do we want on one side, and what do we want on the other side? X squared and a number. Great. We want x squared and a number. That's called isolation. Uh, we want to isolate the x squared first. <coughs> Isolate the square. Ironically, this is the same thing that happens at every party. The square. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a square because I just used that joke. So 5x squared minus 55 equals 0, not good enough. We don't want that. We want to add 55 to both sides. Sure we do. Because what we're trying to do is get the x squared off to itself. Now i got to tell you, you can have a problem on a test just like this. If you remember this, it's going to be pretty easy. If you don't, you're going to make a mistake right here. Right, because right now you, you all pretty, oh well, yeah, I know how to add 55. Yeah, of course you do. You're in the squats, right? But right now is a problem, well, it's a part where people make a huge mistake on this problem. They go, oh, well, the x squared's isolated. Now I can take a square root. And they go, oh, okay, if I take a square root, here's a mistake, I'm going to show it to you, I'll show you the mistake. People do this, people do this, which that is possible. You can do that. However, their next step is the mistake part. The next step is they go, oh, well, this goes to 5x, and this goes to plus or minus square root of 55. Do you see the mistake? If that looks right to you, well, there's an issue going on. If it looks wrong to you, what's wrong? Simplify it down. So if the 55, that, that's fine. This is, this is appropriate on this side. However, this side, something happened. You see, you took a square root of 5x squared. Now, while the x squared gives you x, what's the square root of 5? It's not 5. So technically, what you should have around this is a square root of 5, right? Instead of actually dealing with that, why don't we make it easier? Instead of having the square root of 5x equals plus or minus the square root of 55, that kind of sucks, right? We don't deal with that. Is there a better way to go about it? Maybe before I actually take a square root, let's Let's go back and, and continue isolating it. Instead of having 5x squared equals 55, can you get the x squared by itself first? Yeah. What are you going to do? Right by five on both sides. Okay, let's do that. Make it look exactly like these problems before you work with it. Because now, I mean, no problem, really. We'll take the square root of both sides. Good enough? No, we need plus minus. Okay, I need your, your attention on, the, on those things when you're, when you're looking at these. Good enough? No. no. Not yet. Now it's good enough. I have x equals plus or minus the square root of 11. Can you break down, folks, the square root of 11? No. no. So you're going to have x equals two solutions. Square root of 11 and negative square root of 11. Those are your solutions. They are numbers, right? They're just not rational numbers. Try one on your own, and then we'll continue.
Are you done? Kind of quick, huh? Remember that this test isn't going to be hard because the math is really like brutal. It's going to be hard because you, you have to remember what to do when. This, this can go very fast if you really remember what, what you're doing here. So, um, can you tell me, someone left hand side of the room over here, what's the first thing that I might want to do with our problem? Isolate. So I want 3x squared equals 30. Now, as before, we really don't want to deal with that one either because if we take a square root of both sides, you're not just going to get 3x, you're going to get the square root of 3x, and that's going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Instead, let's go around that whole thing. Let's still continue to isolate our variable. We'll get x squared equals 10. Now, that's a lot better to deal with. That's something we can handle with no problems. What are you going to do now? So plus or minus. We need a plus or minus, and we're taking the square root to get rid of that square. We get x equals, notice how the, the square and the square root, those simplify. We get x equals root 10. Negative root 10. How many people got that far? Good deal. You're done. As far as you can go. Now, put another example on the board. Oh, my gosh. Does that look anything like what we've been doing? No. Not really. Not really. But yet again, I want you to think of something. Firstly, could you distribute? You could distribute that, couldn't you? But you're going to get something kind of nasty, right? You know, this long expression equals a number. You'd have to get everything on one side, then factor. Is there a way we can go around that? Well, I want you to look at this one and look at the one that we've done over here. Over here on this side, the reason why this worked, understand the concept here. The reason why this worked is I had something being squared equals to a number, right? And how I got rid of a square was I did what to it? Took a square root. The reason why that happens is because with an equation, I can take the square root of both sides and the solutions are still equal, right? The, the, or, I'm sorry, each side of the equation is still equal because I know that when I raise both sides to an exponent, we're fine. So the reason why we can do this is because I had something squared equals a number. Look back at this example. Do I have something squared equal to a number? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Here I had something squared. I could take the square root of both sides. Let's see if that works. Let's see if over here, I've got something, the whole thing's being squared, isn't it? Tell me something. Have you seen that before in this class? What would happen in something like that? Gone. Yeah, you can do that. Is this good enough to do it to just one side? No. Is it good enough to just take a square root like that? No. What else do you need? Do you see the similarity between that problem and this problem? Mm -hmm. Not just how you do. I need, to, need to have you see it because it's kind of like a key point for us. Yes, no? Yes. Okay, so very similar. We had something squared equals a number. We still have something squared equals a number. We're still going to take a square root of both sides, and we're still going to have a plus or minus. Nothing's changed so far. In fact, the only thing I'm teaching you today so far is how to take a square root of both sides and include a plus or minus. That's it. Just get something squared by itself. So you all told me that that's going to go away. You're going to get what on the left-hand side, folks? Plus two. Plus two. Oh, that's beautiful. Equals plus or minus. The Don't lose that plus or minus the square root of 18. Now, before you go 